It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode is brought to you by HP+. In a world full of smart devices, isn't it about time your printer got smart too? Now printing is smart with HP+. And the HP Smart app is how it all happens. You can print from your phone with just a tap, no matter where you are, even from your garage slash home office slash yoga studio. Huh, that is smart. HP+. Learn more about smart printing at hp.com slash smart. You are locked on NC State. Your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey there, Wolfpack fans. It's me again, Kenton Gibbs, bringing you another episode of Locked On Wolfpack. And ladies and gentlemen, before we get into uh, our distinguished guest, Alex Sawyer, today, I need to tell you all about Fantasy Live. Have fantasy football questions you need answered before your draft? Don't miss Locked On Fantasy Live on Wednesday, April 18th at 9, 9 p.m. Eastern, streaming on the Locked On NFL YouTube page. Subscribe now so you don't miss it. Our stable of fantasy experts will answer every question, uh, will answer your question live or submit them ahead of time to at Locked On Network. On Twitter. So, Alec, how you doing, man? How's, how's that thing going for you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm great as always. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not much of a fantasy sports guy. Um, I get the wheels whooped off me at, at it every time, you know. And there's some of these bets that people are having for the losers of of, uh, of fantasy sports leagues, they're pretty tough. Yeah, there's some crazy ones out there. The, I, I'm going to tell you, though, one that I saw that I'm like, that's a punishment for the loser? Was they had to stay inside a Waffle House? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've seen that one before. Hours. Now, now here's why I say that's a punishment. Because yes, objectively, being forced to stay in a Waffle House, I'm liable to press charges over. But the fact that it was like every pancake, no, every waffle was, that he ate took an hour off. I would have been out of there in four hours flat. <laughs> I would have been. Oh, don't don't worry about it. Do not worry about it. now. Would I have had to go see my doctor to get my blood sugar checked the next day? Absolutely. Absolutely. But I'm just saying, I, I think I would have been all right with that. But let's talk about some NC State news, okay? First of all, I got the, you, you're our local baseball expert. So we got to talk Rodon. We got to talk Turner. We got to talk, uh, what, what is the, the third gentleman's name? He has a hashtag talking about free. Uh, Andrew Kisner. Andrew Kisner. We yeah. got to talk about Kisner. And we got to talk about the free Kisner hashtag because I don't exactly understand it. But we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in just a few. And we also got to talk about Doran being ranked as one of the top 40 coaches in America, top three in the ACC. That sound like a good show to you? Indeed. Sounds great. So, first of all, Turner and Rhode Island. Now, here's the thing, right? I've, I've told people all the time, I get, I get what I don't know, okay? And I know that Rodon's been doing a great job this year. I know that he's a, a Cy Young contender uh, this year. How is he doing? Yeah, he's. it's been fun to watch Carlos Rodon because like, he's a guy that's had a lot of injury issues. He had Tommy John a few years ago, had another shoulder thing that um, bothered him. And he struggled to, like I don't know, consistently play baseball. Like He, he just struggled to stay healthy. And he's healthy now, and you can see that. He's gotten an uptick on his fastball. He's thrown a couple fastballs this year in triple digits, and like he just hadn't even come close to that in his career. Um, it's pretty much literally two pitches for him. It's the fastball, the slider. They're both nasty. And so, you know, when, you, when you're that good at throwing those, you kind of just go with those two. He mixes in a changeup every now and then. But, you know, he, he's been a lot of fun to watch because it's been dominant, and it's been a kind of, like, dominant that, like, people saw at NC State. He, I mean, there's a reason he is a top-five draft pick. Um, because the stuff is just filthy, and now that, you know, he's got a little bit of health that's allowed him to pitch for more than, you know, two months at a time now, and, and it's coming together like I think, you know, NC State fans certainly kind of expected before all the injury stuff. Absolutely. A great ERA. He's thrown a no-hitter this year. I I get it. And, and again, 
for context, for those of you who don't know baseball, this is this is why we break this thing down the way that we do, right? I do the same thing with football and basketball, the sports that I do know intimately where I can tell you the details of how it happens. For baseball, we don't know so much. And so we bring on the experts to talk about it. Trey Turner, what's going on with him? Because he is cool as the other side of the pillow. <laughs> He's had the smoothest slide in all of baseball by far this year. He's going viral with the slide. So what outside of the slide? What is it about Trey Turner that makes him a, a bona fide all star? Yeah, he's Trey Turner's special. You know, he's one of those guys that you know you watch play, and he's just fun to watch because he does everything right. They talk about five tool guys, and he, and he really is that because you know he's a pretty slender guy, but he can hit for power. I mean, he has eighteen home runs this year. Obviously, the speed's there. I mean, twenty three stolen bases. You you see things like that slide. The one of his first games with the John or the Dodgers, he uh. He pretty much scored from first on an infield single. He can do that kind of stuff. He has the pop. He's great at shortstop or second base now if he's playing there for the Dodgers. So, he, you know, it's that complete five-tool player that, you know, as he's gotten into the league a little bit more, his power numbers have started to go up. That speed's always been there and will always be there. And he, he's fun. He, he, he really is, I think, a top-five shortstop in the game, and I don't think anyone can argue that. Yeah, you know – you talk about what he brings as far as power goes, especially for a shortstop. I believe he's top 10 in all of baseball in, or in, yeah, in all of baseball for shortstops as far as home runs go. And he's done so with not as many at bats as some of these other guys have had. So there, it, it must be, it must be acknowledged that, like you said, we've always known he can fly yeah. him hitting for power. Him knowing to get, how to get contact, how to get on base, it's it's all coming together. It's all looking great for him. Kisner, what's going on with him? Why are people trying to free Kisner? What's happening? Where is he in prison? What's going on? Andrew Kisner, so he's in an interesting spot. And I, I talked to him before the season on my podcast about his, his spot because he's with the Cardinals. And he's the backup catcher for the Cardinals. And so obviously that means he's backing up one of the all-time greats in Yadier Molina. I, I think there's a contingent of Cardinals fans that uh, maybe acknowledge that Yadier Molina is a little past his prime. Uh, but he's still their everyday catcher. And listen, Yadier Molina is very good, but he doesn't hit very well. On the other side of that, Andrew Kisner is not really hitting very well this year when he is playing. So, you know. There's a contingent of those fans that kind of want to see the the next generation there, I think. Because Andrew Kisner is a you know, pretty promising catching prospect that in the minor leagues hit really well. So, you know, there's two sides to that. But right now he's just kind of backing up one of the all-time greats, and it's an all-time great that is on the the end of, towards the end of his career. You know, it's, it's always tough to watch a guy that you think is like, this guy is special, behind a guy who, you know, is on the back nine, but even where probably like the back three. Of his career, like, uh, Yadier, Yadier Molina is on the 18th hole. That exactly, <laughs> exactly, and, and and with that type of situation happening, it's it's always tough. It's always tough because you're you're stuck in that situation of, well, somebody's gonna be mad regardless, right? Like there are gonna be the fans who are like, oh, you you let Yadier play as long as he wants to play until he doesn't want to do it anymore, and then you you got the fans who are like, hey, I get it, we're bad, but like, stop this. <laughs> Let us get ready for the future. And uh, in the words of Dewey from Malcolm in the Middle, the future is now, old man. So so play Kisner. Get him out there, and let's see what he can do. I, I honestly, again, don't know enough about it to definitively say, like, what's going on or what's happening, but I'll say this. In terms of, in terms of sports who go for, like, the, oh, let's just do this thing for sentimental value, and not really what it brings to our team. Baseball seems to be one of the worst ones. <laughs> Football does not care at all. They don't care who you were, how good you were. The Patriots let Tom Brady walk over a couple million. They were like, hey, hey, big dog, big dog. We're not about to pay that. I don't care how many rings you got for us. We are not about to pay you like that. And they let him walk. One of the greatest of all time. The guy who I believe he's every Super Bowl that their franchise ever won, he was at the helm for. I mean, like that's that's the nature of football. Basketball, you saw it a little bit with Kobe toward the end with him, where the Lakers were like, all right, 
You shoot up every shot. You don't got to play great defense. It's all right. You're Kobe. That's just Kobe. You didn't see that for everybody else. Shaq got shipped off and tossed around the league like like he was yesterday's garbage. And that's just how it goes in other sports. But baseball, when they want to give you that farewell, when they want to give you that, hey, you've done stuff for us, so we're we're going to have you here for forever, they mean it. But, uh, and, and, and we're going to talk about uh, more of the present and what's going on as far as what's happening now a little later. But before we do, I've got to tell you all about something that's not so fun to talk about, and that is excessive sweating. You know when you're sweating through your shirts for no reason? It's embarrassing, right? Some of you uh, know someone who deals with this personally, and when they speak in public, it may trigger up, or when it's just a hot and humid day. I mean, let's be honest, right? This is Raleigh, North Carolina that we're talking about on this show, so it's Aside from this latest patch of constant rain we've been getting, it's always hot when you're away. So with that being said, it, it, it shouldn't feel like life or death because it isn't, but it's still a big deal to have unsightly sweat popping up all the time. So why not worry about it and just get sweat block antiperspirant wipes? Sweat block is stronger and more effective than most clinical antiperspirants. You simply apply it at night before you go to bed and the next morning, you wake up, wash, and go about your day without worrying about sweat, guaranteed. I know this will sound too good to be true, but I'm telling you, sweat block only has to be used once or twice a week, and it keeps you dry the whole time. No more pitting it out. No more picking shirts based on which ones are high sweat the best. If you or someone you love are dealing with this, you have to check out sweat block. Get it today for 20% off at sweatblock.com with promo code locked on. Or at Amazon and CVS. What's up, everybody? Keenis Cooper here from Locked On ACC. And let me tell you about Sonos, the official sponsor of ESPN College Football. Experience the game like never before with Sonos Arc, the premium smart sound bar for movies, TV, music, gaming, and more. The precise and immersive sound of Dolby Atmos will make you feel like you are in the stadium. When the TV is off, stream music. Locked on ACC podcast, or even audiobooks from using Sonos app, Apple AirPlay 2, or your voice with Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant. Sonos works with all your streaming services, plus you can listen to thousands of stations free on Sonos Radio. Tune into the local stations, relax with your favorite genres, hear what world-renowned artists are loving, and discover new music. Arc was designed from the inside out for incredibly clear sound and rich bass, then fine-tuned by Oscar and Grammy-winning producers, mixers, and artists. True Play tuning software further enhances your listening experience by optimizing ARC's sound for the unique acoustics of the room. Don't wait any longer to get one of the best sound systems in the game. Go to Sonos.com to learn more. So, Alec, Dave Dorn, named third best coach in the ACC, 39th best in the country. Do you think that's accurate? Do you think it's too high? Do you think he's too low? You know, I... I Kind of like that, actually. I, I think it's right on. You know, the two ACC ones, Dabo, Sweeney, Matt Brown, like, sure, I don't think you can make much of an argument against either one of those. I think NC State fans might want to throw Matt Brown in there, but, you know, he, he's been at it for a long time, and he's got a heck of a team in Chapel Hill there. You know, Dave Dorn at 29, you know, I think that's about right. I think what he's done with this program, you know, you look at last year, and we talked last year a lot about, oh, that's his best coaching job, and it definitely was, but he's done a lot of good with this program. I, I think, you know, that 29, that 30 to 40 range, that's probably right where he belongs. You know, here's here's the thing that I find so interesting about this, these rankings and these lists, right? So uh, I recently was on Locked on ACC where I was asked to uh, give a, a full list of all of the coaches in the ACC, and, and I I had Doran ranked at third, and, and I had uh, uh, Clawson right behind him. And – you know, a lot of people were like, oh, you're you're in Homer for the state of North Carolina because all three North Carolina coaches are your uh, two through four. And I'm like, no, I just believe by comparison levels, you're not going to find better. So in, in terms of Doran, I don't think, for example, Manny Diaz, right? A coach that is at Miami, that is a school where you can get Ray Lewis, Warren Sapp, and Ed Reed to come back and stand on your sideline. 
Like that's, that's just the reality. Superstar yeah. names through every generation of players. You have them at Miami. Not to mention a recruiting base that is South Florida. Guys who play football all year round. That's that's what you have to work with down there. Even during their worst years with Randy Shannon or, or whatever you believe was worse than that, they have never had a problem with recruiting, with producing a player or two to put in the NFL. So to me, the job that Manny Diaz is doing, I think anybody could do it Miami. I don't think that anybody could do what Doran is doing at NC State. I think that yeah. that's, a, that's a situation where I'm like, I'm not sure that just any old body could come here and consistently rattle off six or seven, and especially in a year like last year where you're looking at all conference and you're going QB number two and you're going walk-ons in the secondary and you get me eight? That's, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think too many folks can do that. No, I'm with you, and I think there's – it's become very clear over the last couple of years. And I think last year, especially that like there's a culture at NC state, NC state football. There is a culture that has been built by Dave Doran and the players that come in are part of that. And the fans have bought into it. And I think, like you said, it's well put, it's not a program like Miami where you can just go, you know, down the road and get every five-star recruit that you want to find. You have to kind of find those guys that, fit your program that fit the way you want to play. I know, you know, the story that Dave Doran told last year about Peyton Wilson and that whole thing, but, you know, finding those guys, guys like that, that really kind of fit what you've built. That, that's, it's a tough thing to do. And it's a tough thing to consistently do. And NC state's kind of been consistently, you know, throw away 2019. There was a lot going into that one, but been consistently in that seven, eight win range. I, I mean, that's, it, it's a tough thing to do at NC state. And I think Jordan's done a really good job there. Yeah. To me, again, there was a, a tweet sent out by Dan Walken not too long ago where he said, uh, if you win seven, eight games at NC state, you'll be there for forever. And again, how many schools does that not apply? Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. And I remember when Dan Wolken tweeted that because I feel like he wasn't trying to end. It's Dan Wolken. People are always going to get mad at him on Twitter. I, I just felt in the time like he wasn't trying to make that a gripe. It was uh, Dave Doran's here to stay. And I, I think that, like you said, that's there's very few schools where seven, eight wins consistently isn't good enough. Again, if you look at if you look at just the power five alone, because I think in the group of five, if you're consistently at eight, you're going to get bumped up. But if you're looking at the Power Five, I think you've got maybe, maybe eight schools where that doesn't fly. Yeah. Maybe. I think if you get eight wins. At most. Eight, 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 that's me being generous. Yeah. I yeah. think you got Bama, you got LSU, you got Texas, you got, mm, well, yeah, Texas turns over coaches every other day, so you got to include <laughs> uh, You got Oklahoma in there. You got, I mean, I guess Auburn by comparison, just because they are in such close proximity and Alabama is their rival that they they kind of have to do that or else. Um, and you got USC and Oregon and you got Ohio State. I don't even think Michigan is there anymore because no. Harbaugh has been consistently bringing them eight. <laughs> and they're like, it's all right. Uh, we gonna extend them off eight. So I mean, it, I'm just giving you eight teams, and if there's anybody that I'm missing, please throw it in there. But I, I named eight teams exactly that these are teams you cannot win eight games. If you do that, if you win eight at Purdue, they'll build you a statue. <laughs> if you win eight at Louisville, they'll give you a lifetime contract. Oh, I'm sorry, Florida State, Florida State. So I guess not. You can't win eight at Florida State. I don't think they'll be happy with that this year. So nine programs. But, I mean, other than them, nine a year at Iowa State, huh? Bill Snyder at Kansas State. <laughs> the field is named after the man, and he wasn't <laughs> averaging now. So, I mean, I think what Dorn is doing here is great. I think that him being here so long, like you said, there's a culture here. There's an identity here. There is and, – and not only is there a culture and identity, but the culture and identity match the fan base. Yeah, that's important. And I think Dave Dorn – 
that's something that that can't be overstated is how much Dave Dorn kind of fits in with NC State. And that's why that is why I believe that this Mississippi State game is not going to be as tough as everybody thinks it is. Because everything that Mike Leach is and stands for is extremely different from what Mississippi State is. Like that, that's just two totally different you're not looking at the same thing in Stark Vegas as you're looking at with a Mike Lee. And granted, I don't mean from like a – there are a lot of places where they align. But I just mean historically what they've been and who he is, philosophy-wise, as far as your actual X's and O's, what your scheme is. They're known as the team that is physical, that beats up on you, that even if you beat Mississippi State, you're going to know you played a football game afterwards. You're going to know that. Mike Leach has not, that's not, this is air raid. We're going to throw for 600 yards a game. We're going to allow 550 yards, and it's going to be wildly exciting, but we're not going to be able to stop a run with a a tissue, Robitussin, three shots of the vaccine, (laughs) and a National Guard. Like, that's just, that's what it is. So um, that's just a a little tidbit there. But all in all, again, I've always said this. I think that Doran is a really quality coach. And the the last thing that I'll say on this, it's all about the, the dating scene, right? What are your comparison levels? The dating scene in Raleigh is not the same as the dating scene in Jacksonville, North Carolina. Like what what is considered a six in Raleigh goes to goes to Wilmington and you become an eight. Like that's that's just how that works. Like you the the levels of what is attractive, what you want. As far as coaches go, what coaches are you going to pull to NC State that you feel like are head and shoulders above them? I don't think there is one. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. The only one that I've, I've said consistently, you can get them, but you're not going to keep them, is Luke Fickle. That's it. And I'm not even sure. I'm not even 100% sure about that one. Yeah. I think you could get them. I'm not 100% sure about that. Let me not say I'm 100%. I, I think you get them. I think it's a shot. But I don't think that it's head and shoulders. If you want him, he's going to come get you. Because I'm pretty sure Luke knows that there's going to be a, a, a school up in Ann Arbor that's going to need a head coach <laughs> one of these days pretty soon. I'm sorry for all the Michigan slander. It just, it's it's happening. <laughs> it's been one of those episodes. But anywho, uh, it, again, this is a situation. We love what Doran's built here as far as he may not have the, the uber quality wins. But being the be- one of the best coaches in NC State history against the spread means something. Literally, preventing NC State stuff for the most part means something. It just does. And yeah. like, we, like we talked about, the culture is what is built, and that is what is important. And another built that's important is Built Bar, ladies and gentlemen. Built Bar is the delicious, the best-tasting protein bar ever. With nine delicious flavors, they have something for everybody, be it coconut, coconut almond, cherry, raspberry, mint brownie, peanut butter brownie, double chocolate, or salted caramel. There's something for everyone. By the way, if you haven't tried every flavor, you can get a mixed box where you'll get two of each. And not only are these things soft and chewy and covered in 100% chocolate, they're also healthy with up to 17 or 18 grams of protein and as low as 180 to 130 calories per bar, by the way. Also, 4 to 5 grams of net carbs and grams of sugar. This bar is amazing. It's all tasty and all healthy all in one. So go go online in order today and get your raspberry or your mint brownie or whatever you like. Go to BillBar.com and use promo code LOCK15 and you get 15% off your first order. Again, use promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your first order at BillBar.com. Also, bet online. Excuse me, betonline.ag is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your sports action. Baseball season's in full swing. Preseason football is here. By the way, always bet the under in preseason football. Word to the wise. Get all the latest news, odds, and info for all your sporting needs at betonline.ag. Before the next pitch, before the next kickoff, before the next tip-off in summer league, Go to your laptop, mobile device, or desktop and check out all the great sporting news, sign-up bonuses, and contest information. Don't sit on the sidelines anymore. This is your chance to get in the game as teams prep for their seasons or their playoff runs. Head to the website 
and sign up today to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Use promo code locked on when you go. Bet online, your online sportsbook experts. So, Alec, this is one thing that I, I forgot to, to mention off air, but this is something that uh, the, the Bet Online average just, just brought to mind here. Okay. Okay. What do you think the under over is in Vegas for the amount of wins NC State has this year in football? Or have you seen it already? I have seen it different ways. I saw there was one casino or sports book or whatever that had it ridiculously low, and I don't remember what it was, but I've seen generally. Six point five ish. I, you know, I looked at that and I said, if I had a house, I would bet it on that. I would bet it on that because yeah. I'm I'm looking at I'm looking at six games where I see NC State should be head and shoulders better than their opponent in six. Yes, and then I'm looking at games where I'm like, mm, worst case scenario, that might be a game that's neck and neck. It's a coin toss. I think we'll have the better quarterback, so I think we'll get out of that one with a W in, like, two or three. And then I'm looking at the last three games and saying to myself, this is a winnable game. The only one that I think this is an extremely tall task, Clemson. But if you're talking Miami, remember last year, De'Aaron King beat us by some. Mm -hmm. He's... He's only a few months removed from an ACL tear, and everybody's like, yeah, he's all right. He's 100%. Huh? What ACLs y'all got down in Coral Gables? <laughs> what new – What this that new math, as my parents would say, because I'm i I'm adding one plus one, and it's equal in fish. <laughs> like, this is this is something, you know, the, at the timeline for when he tore his ACL, people should be like, I mean, we're not going to try to overload him, but, you know, we – we expect him to be good this season. And everybody's just like, no, he's he's great. He's going to be ready. Ready? There, I, I'll, I'll give you a prime example of how important he was to that team, both through there and on the ground. He led them in rushing and passing in five games. Yeah, yeah. Huh? And y'all are just like, yeah, it's, it's cool. And then when we get to the universe of no consequences, who that caught a pass is coming back? Who that scored a rushing touchdown is coming back? Like is it? They're just like, yeah, we lost five thousand yards of production, but we're number ten, huh? We we have Sam House still, <laughs> huh? I, again, <laughs> I I think that I think that Sam Howell reminds me a lot of uh, former Lions quarterback Matt Stafford. Uh, that's a guy that I'm very fond of. I, I think he played some good ball. I don't think that he alone is enough to get that team to be the tenth best in America. I don't yeah. believe that. I'm having a hard time. And if you're talking the NC State over at six and a half, you don't even have to win that game. I mean, even if you lose to Clemson and Carolina, you only have to find, I mean, <laughs> you have to find seven wins still to hit the over. Like, I, I think that's an easy over. And not, not only that, like you said, you don't have to win those two games. Really, if you think about it, you don't have to lose. I mean, you don't have to win, you don't have to win Miami three. either. Yeah. You don't have to win any of those. Like, you're, you're telling me here. You're telling you could lose me, to Mississippi State too. You're t- exactly. You're telling me <laughs> with a straight face, like I am so, I am so set that this team cannot beat, uh, cannot win seven games. That I'm gonna, I'm gonna bet that we're they're gonna lose to a USF or a Furman. Like that's really what you're saying here. Like, in all reality, that's what you're saying, okay? Because like we've already talked about, you look at USF. That is head and shoulders, should be the better team. You talked about Mississippi State. Okay, sure. That's one. Could go neck and neck. You never know. Then you got Furman. That one is another one. You should be head and shoulders better. Then you got Clemson. That would be an upset. So it them losing would not be a surprise there. Then you got Louisiana Tech. Yeah. Yeah, the Raising <laughs> Cages are, are really scaring me. Then you got Boston College. I don't know if everybody thinks that Halfley is the second coming of Jesus or something, but the fact of the matter is, I, I don't, I don't know why like that one would be. Oh, it's impossible to win. But even if you say that one is in the neck and neck category, you're still at three. Then you've got uh, Miami. Sure, throw that one in the neck and neck. You got four. I mean, you're at three still. 
You got Louisville, Florida State, Wake Forest, Syracuse back to back. Huh? That's a stretch. That's the stretch right there where you're like, all right, even if things go sideways, even if things go a little off the rails, that's the sweet spot. Yeah, yeah. Where I, I'm going to get it together. And then you go into the game against the University of No Consequences off those four. Huh? And then the, 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 the other part about all this, they include the bowl game in those under overs. Yes. Yeah, so you have 13 to work with. You have 13 in reality. So you're telling me, even if we go worst case scenario, right? In every game where you're like, I can see a world where they lose, they lose it. You still end up with six wins here with USF, Furman, Louisville, Florida State, Wake Forest, Syracuse. You're at six right there. When you get to the bowl game, a six and six ACC team is probably going to get a group of five school. Yeah. Um, I think they'll be all right. I think they'll be all right. So, I mean, you know, it's it's just a very fun, very interesting thing there. Like I said, I'm not much of a better, but I bet the house on that. Uh, anywho, Alec, thank you so very much for coming on, man. Tell the folks yeah, they course. can find your work. Yeah, it's uh, packpride.com, at Alex Sawyer on Twitter, at packpride on Twitter. That's about it. <laughs> all righty. Thank you so very much, and thank you all so very much for coming on and listening. I appreciate it. I appreciate how much y'all have been interacting with me. Um, in in my DMs or, or in my messages on Facebook or whatever the case may be. I appreciate it. I promise you, if you message me, I'll message you back. Thank you all so very much for continuing to grow these numbers, to grow this platform, to give us some national respect uh, as far as, you know, we the more that our media grows, the more that we are going to be in those conversations and people are not going to be uh, give, always giving away money, giving us an under over a six with one of the best teams in recent history. All right. Peace and love, y'all. And as always, go back. You are Locked On NC State, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolf Pack, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. The Warriors refuse to leave the past in the past. Here's what our local experts are locked on today. The Chicago Bears say that their rookie quarterback, Justin Fields, will play in Chicago's second preseason game despite an injury scare. How worried is our local expert, Lauren Cox? Watch Locked on Bears today on YouTube to find out. In an interview posted on Bleacher Report, former Golden State Warriors teammates Kevin Durant and Draymond Green blamed management for the fallout from an argument that was largely seen as the reason that Durant left the team in 2019. Our local expert Wes Goldberg has the details on that plus the NBA's Christmas Day schedule. Today on Locked On Today, host Peter Bukowski continues his look around the NFL. Listen for previews of the Cardinals, the Chiefs, and a special look at how the Bucks are preparing to ward off the dreaded Super Bowl hangover. That's on Locked On Today. Local experts on the biggest stories, it's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.